The following program is powered by Ride the Wave Media. You are now listening to The Restored Wife. Welcome back to The Restored Wife Podcast. I'm Brenda Kurdolfer, your host and relationship coach. And today I have a very special guest with me who I'm so excited for us to talk to. I have Tina Salisbury with me and she works with successful working moms to help them cultivate the work life, like the true work life balance in their lives. And Tina is the creator of the Come Alive Identity Formula and founder of Momentum. And that's mom all in caps. And it's a group coaching practice that supports working moms and helps them create their ideal lifestyle where they can achieve success in their personal goals without feeling like they're failing as a wife and mom, which I think is so valuable. So thanks, Tina. Is there anything that I missed that you want to add to that? Yeah, no. Thank you for having me on here. I'm super excited and hope to add just some new awareness and levels of depth to finding this thing called balance. That's definitely not anything new that we've been searching for, but hopefully we can look at it some different ways today. I love that. Awesome. Well, this is a relationship podcast, so we're just going to like throw Tina right in the middle of this idea of how can we navigate balancing our own personal fulfillment with relationships and family responsibilities that we have. Yeah, good. I'll just jump in. (laughs) How do you help? How do you help your clients, I guess, is what I should say. Yeah, definitely. And really, this is my own story. So that's really why I'm so passionate about it is because this was me. This is something that I have to continue to fight for. We all have to fight for what that means to have balance and to find beyond success, fulfillment, right? That harmony, that blend between balancing the things that are important to us, whether that be work or other interests or hobbies or goals, and taking care of our family and our relationship with our spouse and significant others and those things that are most important to us. So really coming from that story, working myself as a corporate mom for 13 years and really feeling like the only option that I had was to either leave work or to feel like I was always failing my family became something that as a life coach has really become a mission for me to help women in particular because we are so hard on ourselves about that to really understand we get the opportunity to have both. And that wasn't really something that ever came into my mind was how can I have both? It was really just felt like when you're at work, it needs to be all about work. And I was distracted by what it meant I wasn't giving my family. And when I was at home, it just seemed that those work boundaries would just bleed into that home time. And I would be on my laptop or answering another email or distracted on my phone and just always felt like I was falling really flat as a mom and being present. And in particular, I had when my son was three, this one incident where he was trying to show me a toy that he had. And of course, I was saying, huh, okay, I see. And but I was on my laptop and I was typing away. And all of a sudden, this little hand came up and closed the lid to my laptop. And he said, here, mommy, here. And of course, You could imagine the heartbreak of just hearing those words and in him, that tangible evidence that he saw that I wasn't being present in that moment with him. And it was definitely one of those moments where you're like, okay, I got to change some things to make sure that this happens. So that's why I think balance is so important for us. But I also think it's important that we really make sure we understand what that is and personalize that specifically what that is for us to be able to to own that authentically because what balance looks like for me is very different than what it will look like for you and also at different seasons in our life right it can change as a mom of babies and toddlers what i had to give to my family and and the ways that i they needed me to to show up for them are very different than now where most of my kids are almost or entering or have been teenagers and entering into adulthood now and what that looks like and what that dynamic is. So rather than I just remember feeling so disheartened in that and it was hard and always very heavy, I hope that whatever what we discussed today can really help you to 
make this feel light and doable and enjoyable and you feel more peace and more presence and more capable to to just cultivate that in your life because that's where we really find joy. That's where all of these things that we work so hard for really start to to matter and come together for us. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Just that idea of like the peace that can, that is available there, that can you can have, but it is a matter of really like asking yourself, like, what does this look like to me? And what I love that you brought that up, that it looks different for everybody. And I know for me, like one thing that I do with my clients is we talk a lot about like, how are you feeling and what do you really want? What is what is the ultimate goal here? What is the vision that you're trying to create in your home? How do you want to feel? So if you want to feel peaceful, then like, let's work on the actions or the, yeah, just getting to that place that, that, that vision that we would need to create the feeling of peace. Yeah, I love that, right? Because it means let's slow down just a minute, right? To yeah. start to actually ask ourselves the right questions to really understand what it is we want in the first place. So with that, I really brought three points today, Brenda, to help you and to help everyone listening to really start to understand, okay, so I know I want this. I want to feel balanced. Yeah. And I want to have fulfillment. I want to have the things I want, but I also want to make sure that I am maintaining and, and having space for good family relationships and to be present. So I'd love to dive into those three points and really give us some tangible things we can start doing. Yeah, let's do it. I'm excited. All right. Awesome. So my first point, right, again, helping you find fulfillment and imbalance within these roles as a working mom is to first understand why aren't we there now? Right. So just like you were saying, Brenda, I think this goes so well. It's like, what are we, we get really busy focusing on everything we need to do and then just doing the things or when we want to feel differently, like, OK, what else can I do? Or maybe I just need to do more is typically the answer that's first on our plate. And when we can start asking ourselves better questions, that right there is going to bring a whole lot of peace and alignment because we're going to have clarity. So clarity is that first key for that. So instead of focusing on the doing, a question that I really get my clients to focus in on is, who do I need to become, right? Who do I need to be to have this life that I want to create? And so instead of trying to like get out of feeling overwhelmed or feeling too much stress, just like you said, it's that first question, like, how do I want this to feel instead? Right. And when I feel that way in my life, what actually could change and how would that look different for me? And who do I need to now be now that I know those things? Who do I need to be to start creating that? And when we start to do that for ourselves, we're now looking at instead of just trying to get away from that. We're standing tall in our identity. We're identifying the things that matter to us. And we can start actually coming up with a lot of solutions. I don't know about you, but when I look at my outside circumstances, a lot of times I just feel stuck to say, I'm just going to have to wait this out, right? Or maybe after a certain amount of time, it'll just get easier or better. And I would always find myself waiting for something else to change. And eventually I really realized I'm like, I'm going to miss a lot of life if I just keep waiting for it to go past, right? If I just keep waiting yes. for some magic moment to make everything mm -hmm. better, because we're always going to be busy. We're always going to have a lot on our plate, right? And honestly, don't we want it that way? Don't we want to have a, a really full and amazing life? We just don't want to have the emotions that we're creating along with that. And the reason that we're there is because everything that comes in front of us becomes important instead of us allowing us to really understand, like, what do I want to be important? Mm -hmm. So we have to take some personal ownership. That's hard sometimes, right? Because it's easy for other things to be the problem. But when we do stand tall, in who we need to be. And then we start working to become that person, not all at one time, but taking the steps. It's going to feel so much better, especially when we focus on how we want that to feel all along the way for us to get there. Yeah. I love that you brought up 
waiting for the thing to happen. Like it, for me, it was like, okay, when all my kids are out of diapers or when all my kids are in school and like, it just, it, that would just go on and on. Like there, there, there's never really an end to that. If that is my focus, like, oh, I can do this or I can have this when this other thing. Happens. And it's really like the opposite, I think is what you're saying. Yeah. And definitely a, a big limitation that I see us moms falsely tell ourselves is that when, if I'm going to give something to myself that I need so that I'm taking better care of myself or I get the time and replenishment that I need, that it means I'm taking this time away from someone else, right? Like, so if I go downstairs to my gym to do a workout, well, I'm stealing that time away from my kids who might also need something. And that brings what? A lot of guilt, right? We, we have a lot of guilt around that. And it's false guilt, right? It's self-induced guilt because we're, it's how we're thinking about that causing that. So instead of me feeling like this is taking away time for, from my kids, what if instead we thought about how we felt when we exercised or after we exercised, right? I don't know about you, but I feel energetic. I feel proud. I feel confident after I work out. And I would much rather mom from that type of perspective that I am a confident, energetic, um, self-fulfilled mom rather than feel like a depleted, guilty mom, right? Like what type of energy do you want to, do you really want to parent from? That in itself can help us to start to stand tall and taking care of our own needs when we know we're going to show up as a better mom. And when we do, that's actually going to give so much more to our kids. So remind yourself of that for your own needs. It's like, what, how am I going to feel after I do this thing for myself or when I accomplish this thing for myself, right? Or along the way as I'm doing this for myself. And how is that going to translate to what I give to my spouse, to my kids, to the other people that are important in my life? And if it's an improvement, we owe it to ourselves and to them to do those things. Yeah. And nobody else can do it for you. Like you have to do that thing. You have to make that the priority but I like there is that space where there's some guilt there like and I know for me it's the same when I self-care is a huge thing for me now and I had to fight the guilt to get through it to get to the shopping trip or the walk outside and during though I'm feeling good it's like it fades into the background just as I go through the motions and then I come home or I come back and oh my gosh yes I'm the mom I'm like, yes, let's play a game. Let's, what do you need? I'm just there and I'm enjoying it. It's not like this drag that like, oh, they need something again. Yeah, yeah. And times to get to that place. Yeah. Like, to push aside the self-induced guilt that you were talking about. Yeah, so number one, no, like that's normal, right? That is normal. That is the normal response for all of us to feel that. And then it's also really good to find those times where we have done that for ourselves so that when that those opportunities for guilt come, come back up, because they will come back up, right? We can remind ourselves, oh, actually, it wasn't a selfish thing for me to do this. I have tons of evidence that this is something that really benefits my family and gives us back time, right? So I've really found getting coached in those times, right? Because there will be times that those come back. So allowing myself, one, to just, again, ask better questions of myself to get more clarity about what matters. And then two, just have somebody help me with some really great questions that's outside of my mind that can really help me to see it in a better way is very helpful with that. So huge, really yeah. important. Love so that. respect her question. Definitely ask better questions. If nothing else, right? Just know, like, I'm going to ask myself some better questions about how this could be for me, how it could be for my family, how this could be for my kids. And again, if it's going to be an improvement for how you show up for everyone else, you owe it to yourself and them to go and make sure that you take care of yourself. All right. So as we move on to point number two, so number two to really, again, help us with this fulfillment and finding more balance is to get your yes through more specificity. All right, so here's what I mean by get to your yes, right? So once we understand and we have more clarity about what we should do, 
we feel, again, like if I want to have a goal as a mom, so for example, if I want to work on weight loss or I want to run a race or I just want to have a few moments of time where I can step away every day to take care of myself in some way, oftentimes the misconception or how we choose to do that is to try to work that goal around everything and everyone else in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, today I'm going to exercise, but we don't usually plan a very specific time. We just say, today I'm going to exercise, right? Or today I'm going to go for the walk. And we try to incorporate that into just happening for us, right? Where everything with everyone else, right? My kids need to be at school at this specific time. I need to be at work at this specific time. I've got this appointment, so I go at this specific time. Do you see like a disconnect in ways that we typically handle our goals versus how we handle everyone else's agendas and needs and things like that, right? Like it's in the phone, right? It's in my calendar. I've got those times in there, so I don't forget. Yeah. So I'll teach you my favorite word, and that's specificity. Specificity. We have to give ourselves the same amount of specificity, the same amount of time in our calendars, the same way that we give other people time in our calendars, we need to do that for ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Because the bottom line is very rarely are we going to just happen to fit it in because no matter how much we want to have that, we're going to just handle what's in front of us, right? And I heard this said very well one time that really resonated with me. And she was teaching about time management. I can't remember who it was to give credit to it. But I remember that she had said, if you have a lot of things that are urgent in your life all of the time, then you're not planning very well. Right. Mm -hmm. So and I thought, ooh, do I feel like things are urgent in front of me and things I have to get to right away, right? Is my to-do list really long? Do I never seem to get to the end of that? Am I making everything urgent in my life? And a lot of times we do. And again, it's because if something comes in front of us, again, especially as women, like we're going to take it on. We can take it on. Like we are just good at that. We're good at doing all of the things and taking care of multiple things at a time. And it's all very great for us to recognize that those are good things about ourselves. But again, if we are not specifically planning that time for ourselves, we're going to get to the end of the day and feel very unfulfilled, right? I have had so many days where I would go to bed and I would be like, I didn't get anything done today. And if I would stop and ask myself, wait, Tina, is that true? Is that really true? I'd probably come up with a list of 30 to 40 things that I was able to get accomplished that day. But because I never actually stopped to recognize that, one, I just felt like a failure a lot of days. And then if I would have stopped to do that and I would have said, wait, so now if I'm recognizing I did like 30 or 40 things today, why am I going to bed feeling like this? Mm -hmm. Why, Why do I feel this way? It's a really good litmus test for us to start saying, right, what's not getting accomplished that's leaving me feeling empty instead of full at the end of the day, right? Like think of the difference between the days you go to bed, like you're just like, this was such an amazing day, right? Maybe you were really productive and you had that quality family time, like every bucket got filled. And then some days where you feel like totally you didn't get to it. Right. What if we stop and start questioning, like, why is that happening for us? Why do we feel that way so that we can then have the awareness to start putting in the things that we need to start putting in? Yeah, I started doing that in like because I would get through the morning and it would just feel like I was exhausted by like nine or ten. And I'm like, what? Like, I don't even know what I did. I didn't do anything. And then I started sitting down and just writing everything down. I went through literally everything like oh, I saw the dog's water needed to be filled. I filled up the dog's water. I switched the laundry. I went to the bathroom even. Just like every little thing, I got a snack. I took my kids to school, added up pretty quick. And then it also gave me confidence to be like, oh my gosh, I do so much. And like, yeah, really, I don't have to frame it as an I I deserve a break, but it's like, well, of course I'm exhausted and I want to give this to myself. Yeah, it helps us see that. Those things build me back up. And it gave me confidence to be like, if something wasn't done, it was like, well, I did a lot. 
ready. And that can wait. And it wasn't like, I didn't have all this turmoil about those things that, that weren't getting done also. Yeah. Yes, definitely. So a couple of like, okay, how do you apply this, right? Getting to our yes through more specificity. So again, number one, we just need to know what's important to us, right? What, how do we want to give back to ourselves? I call these like energy givers. There's certain things that I do in my day that are just for me, but they give me energy so that I can then, again, go out into the world and be the best coach, be the best mom, be, be the best wife. And when I know what those things are, Instead of just hoping that they come or maybe even planning for them last, I teach my clients like we're going to put the good stuff in first. We call it the good stuff, right? This is the good stuff, the things that we want to get to, the time for ourselves, the self-care, the socializing and getting out with other people, the family time, um, where we want to be unplugged and just totally present in our life. Like that is the good stuff. And if we plan for that first, right? We're going to get those things. It's like that analogy where you have like rocks, boulders, pebbles, sand, and you're trying to fit it all into the jar, right? And they show this that we just put the sand in first and then we try to put in the bigger things. And like by the end, it's like none, it doesn't all fit. But when we start with putting in the biggest boulders and then we put in the next size rock and then the next smallest rock and then the next smallest rock and then at the very end, we start filling it in with all of the sand, right? What happens? All of a sudden, we can have, we have so much more capacity to hold all of it. And that's important to remember because what you need to, again, show up as your very best self, like the things that you need to give you energy back, those are the boulders. And if you don't fit them in first, they're not going to fit into your life, right? So for every yes, we might have to say a thousand no's, right? For every yes that really does matter, it does require us to also say no to the things that we have. But again, if we align it correctly, I'm, I guarantee you'll start to be able to fit in more in your life than you think you can hold. But you'll also be fulfilled because there won't be a bucket, in particular you, that's left off the table. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much, Tina. It's so fun to hear it in a different, in like different wording because say it's like really similar what I help my clients do as well. We just call it a few different things like, like what makes you ridiculously happy? We're going to, the same thing, like we're going to schedule in those three things a day first. And yeah, like it's weird how it happens, right? That your time and your space expands when you're filling that bucket with those like boulders, which sounds heavy, but it's like, no, it's, they're that important. They weigh, like it's a weight measure. Yeah. I love that. I think I'm going to create that every day for myself, Brenda, with ways to be ridiculously happy. I love that. And something to like help ourselves at the end of the day, right? So we do, don't walk into bed feeling unfulfilled is a practice of just Telling yourself three things you're grateful for that day or three things that you're proud of that day, right? Th so those days when you're just like, nope, I'm not proud of anything. There wasn't anything. And you're like, is that true? Like, what did you do today that you could be proud of? And give yourself permission to find the little things because your mind's going to say there was nothing major or huge in this day. And guess what? In most of our ordinary lives, there's not something huge, momentous every single day that we accomplish. But those consistent acts of taking care of ourselves, of showing up for the work that we are, are here to do, those things matter. And when we start to just recognize those for ourselves, hold gratitude for those, be proud of ourselves that we've accomplished it, like that whole transition of feeling more joy, feeling more peace in your life will be there. We'll be there yeah. when we do that for ourselves. I couldn't agree more. Good. Okay. The last one to talk about is really just using a better definition of balance, right? So if you think about like balance or work-life balance, like how do you define that? Most, most commonly we're defining it as being able to do all of the things that we want for equal amounts of time, right? And that we're able to like carry everything, 
And I would challenge you to think about that because I know when I felt that balance was going to mean I was going to be able to hold everything and do everything and it was going to feel easy to do that, it never happened. I just continued to wait. So I've since developed a really, a, a much better and fluid definition of what balance is. And that is that balance is doing the right things at the right times. Balance is doing the right things at the right times. So it really requires us to do a couple of things, right? So first of all, like I have to decide what are the right things, right? What are the things that actually do matter in my life? And some of those things might be come very easily for you to identify. But I also want you to think beyond like the roles that you play to actually like what makes you feel what makes you like a good question to ask yourself is what do I want to be known for? Right. So if thing if your life had passed, right, like when you're looking at legacy and things that you want to leave, like what do you want to be known for? It's a really great question because it really helps us to know what things are important for us. And you might answer that 10 different ways, which is awesome, right? And you can find those 10 things that are most important for you. So first, we have to know like what the right things are. And second, we have to really look at the season that we're in. And when we look at those things that are important, say what needs to be important right now. Hmm. So when in in my life right now, like this is a season of work. This is a season of growing this coaching practice. This is a season of giving and developing my programs and my offerings to be better for my clients. But once I have gone through this season and I have these things in place and they're more automatized and they're systematized my season will change to where work doesn't have to take as much time. But right now, while it's taking more time, I have to think if I'm going to give more time to this particular priority, what do I not have as much time for? So a past season, a couple of years ago, I was in a season of training for an Ironman. So in that season of training for an Ironman, I also had to decide like what to adjust, right? Because training for an Ironman really takes anywhere from 15 to 20 hours a week. It's a part-time job in itself to make this goal an accomplishment. So I knew when I did that, that I was going to have to put a higher priority there. I really had to do some checks and balances with my family because they were going to have to support me. Was I going to be able to hold all of the things that I wanted to at work? I had to make some decisions about that. So now in this season of taking on more work, my athletic schedule looks like one bike ride a week. And a few days of, of training for strength training and getting on a walk instead of maybe 40 minutes a day, like 10 minutes a day, right? Go out, get some sunshine, still enjoy that. But I've had to adjust those things. It doesn't mean they're not important. It just means right now there's something that needs more time in my life. And I love this concept and I hope that as you're hearing this, like it gives you just a sense of relief to ask yourself, like, what am I, what is, what am I requiring to take more time or feeling like needs to have more time in my life that really doesn't need more time right now? And in fact, it's actually honoring that thing to let it go and give me more time for the right things in this right season, right? Mm -hmm. Because time, right? We all want more time, but we don't need more time. We actually just need to manage ourselves better in our time. And when we can really do this through balance and really understanding, again, this more correct definition that we don't have to do everything, that we can still have things that are important to us and are the right things, but maybe get less time right now and just focus really on giving ourselves permission to do the right things and let everything else be for a different season, right? Let that yeah. be something exciting for us to look forward to instead of something that we're feeling not enough in right now. Uh -huh. Oh, I like that switch. Like <laughs> if it's causing me to feel like I'm not enough by not doing that thing right now, maybe it does need to just go somewhere else for a little while. Yeah, definitely. So Practice those three things. I think if we're practicing those three things, right, getting more clear, 
asking ourselves better questions, focusing on who we need to be more often than what we need to start doing and what we need to do more, getting more specific with our yes, right? How do we get there? Making sure that we're using our calendar and scheduling our needs the same that we do everyone else's needs. And then three, starting to adopt this better definition of balance. I know that as we do those three things, like you will move from feeling chaotic to more peace and alignment. You will feel it. You will leave feeling like instead of maybe succeeding in one area of your life, that there's the possibility or that you can start to see these glimmers of hope that you are rocking it in so many different ways in so many areas of your life. And that's what's important, right? Is that feeling that we get because all of the goals, all of the successes, all of the things that we're really striving for are really to help us to feel a certain way. So just as you started, Brenda, which was so great, it's like, how do we want to feel in our life, right? What's the feeling that we're after? Because all of the goals that you have are because it's trying to get you to move towards that feeling because that feeling is you. That feeling is who you are. It really is your truth to own and honor that. That's why we set goals to go after those certain feelings in our life. So beautiful. Thank you. I love it all. (laughs) It's so great. I love the idea of, I really love the idea of changing the definition of balance. Like I was sitting here thinking like, is there another word we could use instead of balance? But I'm like, I don't know if there's an, I don't know if there's another word, but. I'll tell you like the word that I love to use is harmony, right? And I use, I talk about balance a lot just because that's what people are familiar with. That's what they want to, they want it to be about. But I really love the, I love the idea of harmony because harmony kind of takes away like that picture of the scales and everything having to be equal and give me like this blend. Harmony is just this, like think of a choir, like the perfect music group, right? And and when they have, when they're in harmony, it's just like this amazing opening, light-filled, joy-filled feeling that we get. So I really love, I guess you can adopt any word that you want, but I love to think about harmony because not only of the picture, like it's a much better picture for me, but yeah. also that feeling I can put myself right in there and know like when you hit that sweet spot, right? Yeah, I can visualize that. Like I'm seeing the three notes and just just the right spot, three different things coming together to make that beautiful melody. And it's so like soothing to be in that place of harmony versus something like dissonance where it's like... like I got all these things going on that I want to do or that are in my life. And like the feeling inside is dissonance, like where I feel disconnected from maybe either thing that I'm trying to do or that maybe there's this like there's a desire in there that's hidden that I can't even get to because I'm so consumed by all the other notes that I'm hearing in my mind. Yeah, right. And that makes a good case, right, to eliminate all of that or to put it to the side. So that you can just focus on exactly what matters, which was those three notes. Yeah, I love that. I do have one question for you because I'm in the phase of life that I'm in now is like my kids are all in school. This was like a thing that I had in my head for the longest time when my kids are in school. And so I'm just wondering, like, what advice do you have for moms of little kids who have little kids at home and or either they're stay at home moms and they're like, this is all I can do right now. Or like maybe there's like a mix going on or just like, do you have any advice for those moms? Because I know that's when I struggled probably the most was when it felt like that consumed all my time and there wasn't a way to get away. I didn't have any concept of this is bad guilt. It felt like good guilt. Like I would try to do something for myself and I'd be like, okay, my baby's only going to be a baby for a limited time. Like, why am I doing, why am I just sitting here at this thing that I'm doing and not at home with that baby? Yeah, definitely. Thanks for asking this because I think it's such an important question. And again, for stay-at-home moms, for working moms, again, that stage of life when our kids are small is a whole different life, isn't it? (laughs) Right? It just really is a different life. And I remember being in the thick of it that I just didn't know if I was going to like, it just was overwhelming. Like in every sense of the word, there was so much to do. There were so many needs to have. 
So again, first I would just recognize like this is the way it's supposed to feel, right? When we have young kids, they are young. Like they don't have much independence. They do rely on us for a lot of things. So understanding, and I think I have five kids. So the first few were just totally like, drowning. It felt just like drowning. And I remember as I started to get closer and closer to that time where I'm like, I'm not going to have babies really anymore, right? Like this is going to be, this is the end or close to the end for us instead of like feeling like waking up to feed the baby and feeling tired or just focusing on that, right? I still was tired. But instead of focusing on those, I tried to focus on what I really wanted to remember and have from this moment. And those like nighttime feedings and some of those times that had been so overwhelming became like relished time, right? The times that I really love with my kids. Yeah. And so one, I think just understanding like this is a season and what do we want to take from this season, right? Again, the, using that definition of balance of what really needs to matter right now. I remember I just felt like, hey, I have this new baby, but it didn't occur to me that I wouldn't be able to do everything that I was already doing in my life. Right? right. And it just, it's not possible. Right. So I think one, just the awareness of, oh, there actually is this tiny human in my life. And I've actually never been a mom. I've never experienced any of this. This is all new. And I'm learning all along the way to recognize like that's going to take some time and some effort. So again, using that new definition of balance, hopefully that makes that really a lot clearer to say what things can I keep on my plate right now and what might need to wait for a season. So that that can be valuable in itself. And then secondly, I would say we do still need the good stuff, right? Both for yeah. ourselves and for the things that we're creating, right? And give yourself permission to put in the good stuff. And in working, I'm thinking of one client in particular, and it was so hard for her to think about how she could do that. And I was in the same position, too, because I felt I needed to do it all right. I needed to be there for all of the things that the kids needed. I needed to be the one to be there. It, it was hard for me to ask for help to watch my kids or things like that. Right. I would feel guilty or feel like I should be the one like I get uh, that belief that I need to be the one to do everything. Yeah. If you want to keep it, we can, but it might not be serving you very well. So, but the way that I would probably advise that you can move through that is because typically when we think like, well, what solutions do I have? We might think of like one thing. It's like, if my mom is available, she can watch the baby. But if she's not available, I can't do all of these things that I want to do. I can't go for a walk or I can't have 10 minutes to go take a shower or I can't step outside to go see a friend or have lunch. Right. Mm -hmm. So instead of that, I just I love to welcome people to give themselves what I call a menu of options, mm -hmm. a menu of options. So you might have when you think about how could I make this possible, right? That's a really important question. Not can this happen, but how could I make this happen? I want you to think about five to 10 ways that it can be possible for you, right? So you stepping out. So, so you're like, okay, I want to go for I want to go for a run, right? So how could I make that possible? Number one, I could call my mom and she could watch my she could watch the baby. And now that was the easy one, right? So it's like, OK, how else could that happen? How else could that happen? And these don't have to be realistic, like let yourself be playful and just think like, wow, if anything were possible, how could this happen? Right. Huh. Maybe it would be that I could hire a babysitter. Maybe I would get creative and say, what other new moms do I know? And could we swap child care so that I have some time off and she has some time off? One creative way I found to get that done was using the childcare at the gym. I would take my I would take my young kids in and let them play with other kids and I would go get my swim done and have time for that. Right. So like keep asking yourself some of the first few are going to probably be easy solutions because they're the ones that you typically think you need to go to. But ask yourself to get a little bit more creative, right? Again, don't make them have to be right or things that you have to do. Just say, how could it be possible? If I didn't yeah. have any restrictions, everything's available to me. How could it be possible? And what this is going to do is allow you to start seeing that 
the things that you need and want are possible for you, right? Yeah. And if you try something and it doesn't work right, what's really great about having the menu of options is instead of saying, now I can't have this or do this, now you're just going to say, okay, well, what else can I try? Because now I have like seven other things that I can try. It didn't, the one that I chose didn't have to be the right one, right? And think how freeing that is now, instead of being like, I tried it and it doesn't work. It never works out for me. I can't have this to say, oh, well, that one didn't work. Well, that was a good experiment. And now I can say, what else will work for me, right? Mm -hmm. How else could this be possible? So asking, our, again, asking ourselves those better questions, using a better definition of balance, and then three, like allowing ourselves to really think about how we can make the things that we want possible in our life. Outside the box, outside of the rules that we've typically given ourselves. Let's just yeah. make it happen. And that will create, that creates so much balance. And I think moms who do stay at home, right? Like that is work. That is probably more work than any of us do. When I quit my corporate job and came home to be a stay at home mom, I thought, oh my gosh, work is such a break. <laughs> work is such a break. And so we need to remember that that being home doesn't mean that we don't have needs and that we don't need to take care of ourselves. So how can we make that happen? What do we need? What do we want to have happen? And how can we make it happen? Yeah, I love that. Even if it's not quantifiable, because I think as a mom, a lot of it's not quantifiable or you're not getting the good jobs all throughout the day when you're doing those things. So to give them to yourself too, to be like, okay, like I am doing something and to really, it sounds like to me, it's just a mindset shift away, but it does take something. Cause like you said, like, oh, I'd call my mom. Like, okay, well, my mom doesn't live here. I have no family here. So I'm like, okay, it's what takes effort to get to that place where how could I make this happen? So I like the idea of not putting any limits on it. Like you might not even know how you could hire a babysitter, but just having right. that just getting my mind working in that direction, I could see how if an opportunity came along, I wouldn't dismiss it as quickly as I might have. Right. I didn't have, if I hadn't have done that, if I hadn't done that exercise for myself. Yeah. And doing that too will make you aware of things that you just aren't seeing right now. Right. Like then yeah. you'll say like, oh, well, I have this neighbor and she's 14 years old. She could probably watch my kids, right? And you're like, I don't, why didn't I ever notice that before? Think about that. And it's just, now we've just given ourselves the gift of just allowing ourselves to be aware and to also think that there will be a solution. If we think that there's not a solution, that thought is going to create limitations for us that there will not be a solution. So when you say it's just a mind shift away, while again, that sounds maybe small, it's the thing that changes everything in our life because what we think will happen, our mind goes to work to make it a reality because it yeah. wants to be right. We want to be right. Yeah. And uh, so whether we think we can or we think we can not, we're going to prove ourselves right. Yeah, that is the work. That is the actual work is the work on how am I thinking about this? Yeah. And we got to be willing to do it. Right. And uh, it's all us. It's all on us right? We're the only ones that can hold the space to really help ourselves. We have to be our own rescuers. And yeah. I think that like, isn't it time that we stand up and allow ourselves to do that, to be the rescuer and to, we play every role. We're such amazing. Like we are super women. Every one of us is super women and holds space for all of the things that we do. Like we definitely are the ones who can help ourselves to have everything that we want to hold. Yeah. And that it's okay to get support along the way. Like, even if you're like, we can do it all, but it doesn't mean we have to do it all by ourselves. Like for me, getting those mind shifts in place, it takes support. It takes having friends. It takes having a coach to really help me hone in on those things and bring them to the forefront. Otherwise, they just stay buried in my subconscious and I keep staying on the hamster wheel. Yep. All of us do. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much for sharing those tips. They're amazing. I think they're going to be really valuable for our listeners. And we have something coming up really soon that might be of benefit too, might be of interest to our listeners. So can you tell us about the Momentum Summit that we're 
both a part of, but that you're putting on for moms and working moms. Yes, I'm super excited for this summit. It's going to be here in Salt Lake City where you can attend live. You also can attend virtually. So I love that this is an open option for everyone to be able to come into. And again, just like we're talking about, like the requirements associated with being a mom are overwhelming. And once we feel like we're getting to that point of being able to take care of our kids, our home, our work, right, our spouse, volunteering in the community, holding space for all of those things, we oftentimes don't leave that time for ourselves, right? And even though we're doing so much, 99.9% .9 of us feel like we're failing or falling short in some way. So the Momentum Summit, our theme is rising beyond limits. And in this one day, it's really a call to all working moms and moms everywhere who are ready to experience motherhood in a whole new way and that want to be happy despite all of the challenges that we're facing and want to have more clarity, just like we've talked about today, about generating balance and being present for your personal goals and in your life. And we're going to do some workshop style like exercises, give you all of the tools to actually do this, right? Which I am really excited about because we do a lot of learning, but sometimes we don't give ourselves time to actually do the application, to actually dive in and, and see what does this look like for me and to get that clarity. So taking yourself out of your regular scheduled programmed life and allowing yourself to say yes for your, to yourself for a day to come and, and, and be here with us and get this and have that opportunity to network and just feel seen and heard in the things that you're going through and the things that you want to do, I hope is going to be a really great experience. So it's next Friday, March 22nd. And I hope that, again, whether you are a virtual, somebody who needs to attend virtually or you're here in Salt Lake or can get yourself to Salt Lake, I hope that you'll take the opportunity to come and join us. Yes, me too. I love workshops. I love like, thank you. Thank you for creating that space because it's true. It's so easy to hear and learn, but it's in the workshopping of it. It's in the writing it down and having the space and time to think about it and somebody supporting me in that, giving me that space and time. And I know for me, it's often easier, which sounds crazy, to get a whole day than to think about like maybe a whole weekend retreat or even just like an hour. Sometimes it's, I think I've learned to carve out those things and prioritize those things for myself, but I love just the whole day. Like I want to do this. And, um, and if I have any like women listening who are really familiar with the skills that we teach and how do I make this happen? Like, I'd love to chat so we can, if you're like, oh, like I just can't make it work or my husband says no or whatever, like Let's talk because I think there's creative ways that we can really make things happen for ourselves that we haven't thought of, kind of like Tina was saying before. Yeah, definitely give yourself that option of how can I make this possible for me, right? And yeah, yeah like Brenda said, like the flexibility that's built into this is exactly for that because we all have different needs and are at different spaces. And hopefully this will allow you to answer that question in a positive way to be able to find your way to get in the room, whether that's live with us, whether it's getting the recordings and watching this virtually and, and just having that support to create this for yourself. Because hopefully even as you felt through this whole discussion today, once we are able to have clarity and we find the ways for to be able to tell ourselves, yes, we find the ways to recognize the things that we're doing. It feels so much easier, right? Allow that burden of feeling overwhelmed or that this needs to be hard or that balance has to be hard. Allow that to go away and find the ways to make it fun and, and feel free and feel like it's in harmony, right? To hit that sweet spot for yourself. I love that. I love it. It's like really opening up a different way when we can do that's what it does for me when I can have that time and space and I can get clear on something even if I'm resistant it's like it just opens up the possibility and I like it may it makes it possible for the changes to occur when they come along or when I'm ready yeah definitely and if you're like me and like anxious about social situations or stepping away from your programming to like be like yeah. can I how am I going to hold this and stuff like 
I just always remind myself of like those times that I go to a party and feel a little uncomfortable or maybe feel like, oh, I don't know if I want to make it. And then I go anyway and I have such a great time, right? I have such a great experience. I come away with so many things. So allow yourself, right? It just is like Mel Robbins says that five seconds of courage. It's like, let's just do this for ourselves and see what's possible, right? And again, everything is all just a great experiment. And but yeah, this live event was specifically put in place because I know and understand the value of us stepping away and just mm -hmm. taking that time to get the work done that we need to, right? We just need to really get the work done. And once it's done, we can step back in. And instead of this taking this whole next year to feel like you get up to a place of balance, what if this is for you, right? To have in a day in 24 hours, right? That you have that that blueprint for yourself to be able to follow and everything since March feels so much better in your year instead of waiting for another year for that to change. Yeah, this is your burst. This is your opportunity to have that burst of clarity that is going to lighten up the rest of the year. Yeah, good. So come and join us. We would love yeah. to have you here. I'm presenting and I'm going to be on a panel. So just once again, it's the Momentum Summit. It's on March 22nd. Nine to four is one option if you're attending live. And then there's some other options available as well. We'll put the link to register in the show notes and look forward to seeing you there. I think it's going to be just a great experience for all of us. And I love what you brought up too about like, if you're feeling shy about it, I've gone to things like that too, where I didn't know a single soul and it felt really overwhelming at first. And yeah, by the end of the day, it didn't even matter because I was getting so much out of this thing that I had done and prioritize it. It doesn't matter if I didn't know anybody. And, and the next time I'm like, okay, maybe I can find somebody to go with. Like that would be fun too. Just anyway. Yeah. You'll walk away with new friends for sure. And Brenda will give your listeners too a $10 discount. So if you, when you check out the link that Brenda will post for you, just put in the code momentum 10 and that will give you $10 off whether you choose to attend virtually or in person. Thank you. That's amazing. All right, Tina, really quick. I have like two unrelated questions for you. Are you from Canada? No. <laughs> Where are you from? Funny enough, like, so I actually grew up in Midwest Ohio. And okay, I don't so. know where some of that, that Canadian accent comes from, because I definitely know it's there. I had okay. a roommate in college from Minnesota. So maybe it picked up a little bit there, or maybe it just is the Ohio in, in me. <laughs> but yeah, there's definitely some A in there, huh? <laughs> that yeah, it's the about it's uh, that's when I hear it like, wait you no know, that's cool you're from Ohio originally that's cool <laughs> and, and I have one final final question if you were a spice girl which one would you be oh my gosh well embarrassingly enough I don't even know that I could tell you which one's with him <laughs> oh my gosh my last my last guest was like wait who are they again that's okay I just think <laughs> many I love music. I am the worst person as far as like, which band was that? What was the name of that song? How did that go? So, but yeah, I, I secretly have this desire to be in a hip hop class. So at some point in my life, no matter how old I am, I'm going to allow myself to do that. So yeah, it's just, I am the whitest dancer that you probably will ever see, but I just love, I love feeling in tune with music right so, yeah. so awesome. I love that well thank you for expressing that here I think our desires are so powerful and I'm just really excited to see how that's going to come about for you very good I can't wait to thanks Brenda yeah thank you Tina